adding rose petals, changing background and applying LUTs to make it all works together is our mission for today's tutorial. Now we have a lot to do, but it's going to be great fun. So if you're ready, we are starting right now. Saying that it's time to move into Luminar Neo, where as usual, we are starting in the catalog module. The first thing we are looking at are the sample files. And here a quick reminder that if you want to follow me along on your own computer, just jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample files now. Inside of the folder, you will find the image we will work with, as well as the background, the rose overlay and some LUTs. Now, those are for you. You can keep them and you can use them on your own images. And again, we will use them for today's project. So we have this lady in a red dress with the roses ready. So let's select the image and move it into the edit module. As I mentioned, the first thing we're going to be doing is replacing the background. So how it's done. We have layers panel here and here we have the image selected. With that done, we're going to navigate into our editing toolbar and we're going to open the layer properties. In the layer properties, we're looking for masking. And once you open the masking, you will notice there is a portrait background and background removal AI tool. Well, since we're working with portrait, let's select the portrait background and give the application a moment to select it for us. Once it's ready, you will get this little icon or button called remove. So we're going to click on that and give it a moment. Now the application will really go in and remove the background for us. If we are happy with the result, we can leave it. Or what we can do, we can click on the refinements brush and that will open a new window. Now, it's very complex on how the different colors work, and we have a full tutorial on our YouTube channel where you can watch it. But very simply, the area that has no color and looking transparent, that's the transition area. Those are usually the edges. The orange area is the object. That's what you want to remain at the image. And you guessed it, the blue area is the background, and that's what's going to be removed. Now, looking at it, when we zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that part of the hair is a little bit transparent here. So to fix this, well, we're going to select the object on our brush here and very easily just brush closer to the uh, edges of the hair. So somewhere around here. And by doing that, that will fix that part. We can actually continue. Keep using a space bar to move around when you have a brush selected. And just very easily brush over here as well. Look on the other side. Again, we can do the same. We can just brush over to make sure everything is selected. And once we're happy, we can zoom back using command or control zero. And again, when happy, just navigate back to the toolbar and click on the portrait background. This way it will bring us back and we can continue. Now it's time to add our background. To do that, we need to go back to the Layers panel and click on the plus sign. Here, click on Load Image. Now, I already have the background here, but for you, click on Load Image and navigate towards the sample files. Again, inside, we have the image we're working with, background, rose petals and LUTs. So, click on the background and click on Open. You see, I already have it here, so it gives me the option to replace it, skip or keep both. I can just click on replace and it will be added here. Now do the same for the roses or rose petals. So we have it ready. And once you're ready, then we're going to select the background. I'm gonna click on it, give it a moment, and it will open in our layers panel. Now you can see the order. We have the original image at the bottom and the background on the top. We can see that it's selected because it has the orange frame around it on the layers panel as well as on our image. So first come first, what we need to do? Well, we're going to take the background and drag and drop it under our model. That's the first thing, because we want to have it behind there. After that, we're going to navigate to our layer properties while still having the background selected. And we're going to increase the opacity to 100. We want to see all of it. Now we, of course, need to fill up some of these spaces. Now the different ways to do that, we can zoom out a little bit and just use the little handles on the side and push it around. Or we can try one of the options here, like fit, 
fill or stretch. But I think for us, the fill will work the best. Now with that being done, we have the background here. Only thing I want to do to the background is to make it a little bit more soft, just to add a little depth. And to do this, while we still have the background selected, we're going to navigate towards the creative section of our editing toolbar. Here, open the blur. Make sure that you are on the Gaussian blur and just increase the amount. Now, we don't want to go crazy because that will just look stupid, but we want to go down and let's say just somewhere gently around three or four. Once happy, we can close the blur tool and continue. By the way, if you want to adjust the position of the background, if you think that maybe um, the floor should be adjusted differently, you can always go back to layer properties. Again, increase the size and move it around. Whatever you like. It really is up to you. But I think for me, somewhere around here works very well. Once happy, hit enter and we're going to continue. Now, looking at it, you can see that the background looks good. However, our model doesn't match the background at all, right? She's too bright. The overall white balance is a little bit cooler on her. Uh, she's missing the warmth and the smoothness. So what can we do? Well, that is the advanced way to do that using curves. And if you're interested in that, we do have a tutorial on YouTube channel how to do that. However, there is now much easier way and that's using the color transfer tool. Well, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to select our model to make sure that we have her selected and again, navigate towards our editing toolbar. Back to the creative section where we're going to open the color transfer tool. How it works, it basically adjusts your image and borrow color and luminosity from another image as a reference image. So very simple. We're going to click on reference selection here. Click on the plus sign and again, navigate towards our sample files. Select the image with the background and click on open. Now we're going to give it a moment. And as you can see, it already applied to our model. Now, it doesn't look the best. It actually looks a little bit too dark and so on, but we're going to adjust it. First thing we need to adjust is the luminosity intensity. So we're going to take the slider and bring it down gently, probably just somewhere around, I think, 55 to start. Now, what about the color? It looks much better, but maybe it's just a little bit too strong. So again, let's bring the slider down. I think possibly between 80 and 90. Well, let's go for 90 for now. Looking at the transition smoothing, we can also play around with that. By default, it's on 75. Let's have a look. I think that 37 is way too much. Let's just go for somewhere around 60, which will bring a little bit of the light back, but keep everything nice and smooth. Color smoothing, keep an eye on it. See how much of it actually applied to the image. There's no massive difference. So let's keep it on our default 30. And the amount, again, you can adjust, see what you prefer. For me, looking at it from here, I would say around 55 looks good. Now, quick double check before and after, and you can see how simple is it and how well it works. So closing the color transfer tool will bring us nicely to the next step, which is adding the rose petals. We have replaced the background, color match everything together. It's time to add what we have actually came for, the rose petals. Well. Back to our layers panel, plus sign again, and this time we're going to select the rose petal overlay. Now, this is one example of the rose petals. However, our romance bundle has a number of them together with other elements and other overlays that you can add. And if you would like to see more or get more elements like this, then definitely check out our romance bundle by simply following the link in the description of this video or even better, head to our website, cleverphotographer.com. Now, back to our rose petals and back to our layer properties. Don't forget to have the layer selected. Increase the opacity to 100. And with that being done, we now need to adjust it further. Now, I don't like how the roses go over her face and some parts of her body. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into masking and select the brush. With the brush selected, we're going to be removing or erasing part of the roses. So we switch to erase size. We can adjust a little bit later, but softness down to five and strength. We're going to keep on hundred. 
Now looking at it, it is completely up to you which part you want to remove, but I will start with the part around the face, so something like this, and just like that, that is removed. If you want to keep this one, uh, you can or you don't have to, it's up to you. For me, I think I will leave it just to add a little bit of extra depth. Now, looking at this part, this doesn't look very natural here, so we will remove this, maybe also the part over here. And, and I think that's about it. We could also remove this part, but then we lose many of the roses, so I'm not sure. I think we leave it for the time being. Now, next thing you could do is to add rose petals into other places. So let's say that I would like one here. Well, how would we do this? Very simply, we would navigate to the bottom of our editing toolbar, look for the professional section, and this time look for the clone tool. Once we have it set, we're gonna hover over one of the petals. So let's say this one right here. And once we have it selected, we can brush it wherever we want. Well, with that being done, let's just adjust the size of our brush, make it a little bit smaller. Uh, strength on 100, softness also a little bit down, around 70, and here we are. So we're gonna brush one petal right here. So Just like this, we are brushing the petal here. Now, I did have taken also the bottom part of the petal with me, so if I want, I can reset this. Once I reset it, go ahead and select a different part of the petal, and from here, very simply, brush again, maybe adjusting the size of the brush again, and just brush the petal in just like this. If I want another one, then hold Alt or Option over another petal like this here, and let's say that we're gonna brush it right here. So very simply, we can add petals wherever we feel we need to add some more. Let's do one more. Let's select, let's say this one here, and we're gonna place it right here, so we're just gonna brush in this area. Quick look at the before and after, and here you see how you can add more petals using simple clone tool here in Luminar Neo. Now, with that being done, we can do further adjustments. Look at the petals and look at their colors, and then look at the color of hair rose. Well, you would like them to be a little bit more similar, right? Hair roses are a little bit more dark and a little bit more that kind of burgundy color, where our petals are more red. And don't worry, there is a very easy way how we can adjust this by going back to the top, still having our layer selected with the rose petals and navigating into the color tool. In the color tool, there is this super handy HSL panel, which will allow us to adjust this. Well, looking at the roses, first thing you can see is they are much darker. So how we can adjust this, we're gonna select the luminance in our uh, drop-down box here, and we're gonna adjust the red color. So we're gonna take the slider and bring it down. And by doing that, we are already getting much more darker color and much more similar color to the roses here. So bring it down, I would say around here. After that, going into the saturation, we can see if this will help us, if we wanna make them maybe more saturated or no, maybe yes, maybe somewhere around. 15. And finally, moving into the hue, with the hue, hair roses are a little bit more on which side? Let's bring the slider down towards the purple, I think that looks quite good, and bring it towards the orange, definitely not. So maybe just add a touch of purple to somewhere around minus 10. With that being done, again, double check, before and after, and everything looks much better. So. The final step is to blend everything together. Now, usually what I do whenever I add really major elements to the image, talking about replacing sky and adding overlays and textures, I like to blend all the layers together and apply LUT on a top of it. It works really well. Well, how can we do this? Right now, we cannot actually merge the layers here in Luminar Neo, so the easiest way to do this is to export the image in the highest possible quality, bring it back and then continue. So that's what we're gonna do. Right click on the image, going into the export, and this will open exporting window. The easiest way is to again, navigate towards the sample files of this episode. Here, quite often I call this mid edit. So we change the name and then we need to adjust the exporting options. So first we're gonna adjust the format. Now the highest quality for export is 
active. And then back to the top, sharpening or none. We don't want to add any sharpness. We want to keep the original size as RGB or in fact Adobe RGB, both of them work. So let's leave it. Format, as I told you, TIFF. Resolution on 300 pixels on inch is very good. Now compression, I like to use the LZW, but you can also switch to none, whatever you prefer. And depth, keep it on 16 bits. <laughs> Finally, don't forget to uncheck the save transparency. You don't want any transparency in the image and hit save. Now the application will take a second to export the image. And once it's ready, then we will bring it back into the application. So for this, we're going to go into the catalog and I actually already have it in the application because I have exported into the folder. But if you don't, just use the add photos and bring it in. So that's our mid edit file. You can see the name. And from here, we're going to move it back to the editing module. In the editing module, when you look into the layers panel, you can see that we have just one image now. So that looks good. And so we can now navigate back to the editing toolbar and head into the creative section where there is the mood tool. <laughs> mood tool is the tool where we apply LUTs or LUTs. So let's click on the gray dropdown box and select add custom LUT file. From here, one more time for the last time, navigate to the sample files open the romantic LUTs and select the three LUTs here. After that, click on add. And in a second, they will appear in the application. So now when I click on choose LUT, I can navigate to custom LUTs and you will see three different LUTs here. Bohemian Bliss, Rose Petal and Ruby Tone. They are also from the romantic bundle. So one more cheeky reminder, if you want to check them out, head to our website, cleverphotographer.com, or remember, follow the link in the description. So how do we do this? Well, we just hover over the LUT and see what it does. Now, usually it's quite a good idea to increase the amount. So let's say we go to 70, and then back to choose LUT, custom LUTs, and just hover over. So the Bohemian Blaze give us this more elegant, dark, contrasty look. The rose petal give us lots of kind of rose pastel colors and ruby tone make it all much more warmer. Now at this point, it's completely up to you. I quite like the rose petal, so we're gonna select that. Adjust the amount, mm, let's say for me around 40. Double check the before and after. And as you can see, it's not a massive difference. And actually it's not supposed to be. It's just supposed to help to blend everything together. Of course, that once you close the mood tool, you can continue, for example, by adding extra vignette using the vignette tool in the essential section. Just bring it down and create a little bit of extra depth. Or you can also go back to the creative section and, for example, use the mystical tool, which adds a nice glow and mystical feel to the overall photo. So this is our image. Now, if I open the film strip, and I reset the original photo. So we should be around here. Adjustments revert to original. Then you can nicely see where we started and where we ended. But this is not it. Now, adding the rose petals and replacing a background is only one of the many ways how you can enhance and improve your romantic captures. If you want to find out more techniques, then we have a full playlist on all the different videos on our YouTube channel already available for you to just move on and continue learning. Or we also have a video for every single tool in this application. So if you're not sure about any of the tools or different sliders, then continue learning by clicking on one of the playlists on your screen now. For now, that's it. This is how you add rose petals to your images and also how you replace the background. So make sure you go ahead and apply it to your own photos.